Welcome to Smart Living Training, Dialer Programming. Here is what we will cover in this session. The Smart Living System incorporates a multi-channel dialer and reporting system that is capable of reporting to 15 individual phone numbers using contact ID, IP, voice or SMS monitoring via PSTN, GSM or IP reporting paths, has selectable reporting methods for each individual number and can be backed up via PSTN or GSM. Contact ID dialing is inbuilt and reporting events are pre-configured for dialer numbers 1 and 2. To configure, first select number 1 from the telephone tree. Next, enter the dialer number and the optional description along with the client account code. Ensure that contact ID is selected as the dialing type. Select the partitions that will report alarms to this dialer number. Select the primary dialer channel to use. You can select the backup option by checking the option Toggle on alternate channel. This requires the Nexus GSM to be installed. If a backup number is required, simply repeat the previous steps for phone number 2. The dialer will progress through numbers until confirmation is received. To set the number of dial attempts, select the top of the telephone tree and select Telephone Parameters. Set the required attempts. The default is 4. Contact ID reporting is configured under Events. All common contact ID events are pre-programmed, ready to report, but some changes may be needed. Open and close reports are enabled by default. To change this, locate the option Partition Armed Away, select the required partition, and then deselect the numbers to disable open and close reporting. Open and close reporting for stay mode arming is enabled by default. You can disable this by locating partition arm in stay mode and following the previous steps. Test calls are triggered by a periodic event timer which is preset for 7 days. To change this, select the smart living system configuration tree. There are 4 periodic event timers. Periodic event timer 1 is used for test calls. Set the required interval for periodic event 1. To set the time of the first test call, deselect the continuous option and then set the date and the time for the call to be made. A dialer test is always triggered when exiting program mode. A test will be re-triggered at the set date and time and then continue based on the interval. To disable test calls it is required to deselect all numbers for the periodic event under events. In the Events tree, locate Periodic Events and then select Event 1. Deselect telephone numbers 1 and 2 from the Periodic Event. Review additional events and then deselect or select numbers for the events. Voice dialing requires the Smart Logo Voice module to be installed. Voice dialing is pre-configured for phone numbers 3 through 10. Numbers 11 through 15 are blank and have no events programmed. It is recommended not to use phone numbers 1 and 2 for voice dialing unless you reprogram the events, as these will send through reports designed for central monitoring. To configure voice dialing, first select telephone number 3 and enter a description and a number. Set the dialer type to voice and then select the partitions that will trigger the number. Next, set the required dialer channel to report through. Zone alarms and tamper events are pre-programmed to report through to phone numbers 3 through 10. For additional reports, review the events and select any events to report to the numbers. Check the activation for the telephone event to report. For basic voice reporting, this is all that is required. The system will generate generic voice messages for all events. 
such as Zone Alarm, Zone 1. It is then possible to configure custom voice messages for all events in the system. Each event has a voice message configuration that allows the construction of voice messages. This is pre-configured for the individual event types. The automatic dialer option sets the message automatically based on the event and the trigger. There are four components to a voice message. The message type sets the voice description for the event type. There are then two message slots that can be used to build the message. There are default messages for all events in the system and a further 165 custom message slots for additional custom messages. The send address option is designed to be used with a custom message stating the address or location of the system. By default, this option will announce the word location. Deselect this option for all events to report if not using the location feature. The table to the right has green check marks which indicate a spoken message in the message sequence. Here we see for the activation event, the type plus message B plus the address. The message would sound like zone alarm, zone one, location. The speaker icons at the bottom allow the message to be tested on the PC speakers. This will play the message in sequence as the customer would hear it. Before customising messages, it is worth noting that changing a default element will change that element for all other events that use it. The text-to-speech engine may not use the exact same voice that is loaded by default. It is possible to default and reload the original voice message either individually or globally at any time if required. To customise an event message, first select the message element. You can use the default elements or add any unused message slot from the drop-down boxes. To edit a message element, double-click the green check mark. In this example, we would change the element Zone 1 to Front Door. A message edit window will be opened. In the top left-hand corner, there are upload-download buttons to send and receive messages to the system. The message category and number should be left as default. If desired, the description can be changed to easily identify the message in the events. Notes can be added to each message for reference. The recording tab allows external sound sources to be recorded. The quality setting changes the quality of the recording and the available time to record into the slot. This button can be used to restore the original sound file if required. This allows to open a sound file in WAV format to upload to the panel. This allows recording a message from a connected microphone or line input to the PC. Select the Text-to-Speech tab to switch to the Text-to-Speech editor. This button opens the Text-to-Speech voice selection menu. Select a suitable voice and use the Test feature to test the voice. Click Apply to set the voice as the new voice for all future edits. Enter your new message in the Message Editor for the new Text-to-Speech message. Play allows the message to be tested. Record will render the message as a sound file ready for upload to the system. To create a new message, select the text-to-speech tab, then select the text-to-speech voice. Enter the new message, render the new sound file, and then send to the control panel. Optionally, you can change the description and enter any notes. All voice messages can be managed easily within the Voice Messages programming tree. An overview of all messages can be viewed and opening a message allows direct editing. Selecting the top of the Voice Messages tree allows the voice module to be factory restored. This completes this training module.